accounts that you, you have the data and you process the data. At the end, so there's this type of abuse of technology that uh, data processing occurs, which is simply not necessary for the real tasks of the public administration. And uh, there's this form of abuse that a lot of new data are created, which are of no value to everyone. Uh, this is a very important abuse. Also, it doesn't come along in a negative way. People have the best uh, attitude. They say, oh, great, we have now this new technology and we can do a lot of new things. But at the end, this, all these new things fail and, and they, they create just useless efforts. I've heard from many public administrations, from many civil servants in public administrations, telling me the stories that after introducing the new technology, uh, the work was slower, there was less efficiency than before, because, and, 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 and this is the abuse type, uh, we had to do uh, lots of new things and we had lots of new data we have not dealt before. Therefore, there's a principle in, in good engineering of uh, high performance uh, ICT application systems, and this means uh, great a lot of information hiding in the sense that all type of information which is not necessary for the work to be done has to be hided and has to be made transparent only this information which is really indeed necessary for them in order to avoid this type of misuse or abuse of technology. The other type of abuse of technology is of course that people may access data uh, in, in an automatic way which they shouldn't access. So for example it's uh, very important that you have a good identity and access management in place and there are lots of other forms uh, of, of abuse which are really negative abuse that people have a negative attitude and then they use the technology uh, to, to deal with these problems and of course this is a concern the project management has to deal with and it should be aware in advance of all these types of abuse which could occur in the project or through the use of the new ICT. Okay, thank you sir. Um, another one in the question box. So you employed, uh, you employed ICT as, uh, you implied ICT is perceived as a threat. Among all the stakeholders, who do you think are the ones who are most afraid of it? Ah. <clears throat> uh, yes, this is a good question in the sense that uh, it really depends on the concrete project and we have been uh, quite surprised in, in lots of cases who was really afraid of the technology. And we've also been surprised who was really supporting uh, the technology in a positive way. Uh, really, it depends on the concrete situation. Uh, in, I've seen projects where the, the threat was really perceived by the top management of the agency. And I've seen uh, projects where the threat was even perceived uh, by the government itself. In, in other uh, cases, it was uh, simple civil servants which uh, perceived the threat. To give you an example, uh, for a threat which is perceived by government, uh, for example, Switzerland is now discussing that whether it should uh, introduce open government data, that is uh, publishing of data from public administration in a machine readable form so that everyone can have an access to this data and can use this data. Uh, so the opposition to the publishing of this data is, for example, due to the top management of public administration, is, is, is most severe among the members of the top management of public administration, of the whole federal public administration, so and, and indeed uh, the head of the uh, public administration is more or less a member of government, so it even can be that uh, there's a strong fear uh, uh, that the threat is perceived in the government itself. Okay, sir. Um, I think um, we have another question which we can take and then we'll conclude. Um, 
could you tell us what are some of the post implementation challenges or issues you have observed? Uh, okay, so this is, yeah, uh, I had not time in my half an hour presentation to yeah. deal with this in detail, but this is also a very important question. So what we observe in, in practice is that in most cases the real benefits of use, introducing new ICT appear only after it has been in use for one or two or even three years. So the reality is that uh, it's not like that, that you introduce new technology and one month later you have an improved uh, quality of work, but it takes you one, two or even three years to achieve this improved quality of work. So the point is uh, your change management project does not stop when the new technology has been successfully introduced, but you have to continue to follow up how the technology is used. You have to observe how the technology is used, which type of problems occur, and you, you really have to, to invest into the improved usage, use of the technology after the introduction. Uh, and uh, this is also often ignored uh, in the sense that uh, I've seen large successful ICT projects which were considered at the end as failures because they didn't bring any advantage. Because no, the advantage uh, took place only two or three years afterwards. Uh, so really, you, it's very important that you do a post-introduction uh, change management and you uh, <coughs> advise all those involved in the process until really uh, everyone is used to uh, successfully and optimally use the new technology. Well, uh, thank you very much, Professor. Uh, that brings towards the end of our webinar. I would like to thank uh, Professor Riedel on behalf of Mal for his time and willingness to share available information and experiences with our participants. Also to thank all of you who participated and we're glad you could join us today and hope the session was helpful for you. We will be emailing you the link to a recorded version of this webinar in a couple of days once it's updated on our YouTube channel and blog. Uh, a quick note, please um, remember our other upcoming high programs in year 2012 on high performance governments are currently accepting applications for enrollment and selection. Professor Reader will also be coming to Medina um, as a distinguished speaker for the program. Please do visit our website www.mile.org to get more details about these programs and upcoming webinars. Also, please note, on September 19, we are conducting another webinar on the topic of executive derailment by Mr. Wali Zahid, who is the CEO of Skill City in Bahrain. It will be conducted at the same time, around 4.30 p.m., Saudi Arabia time. Thank you all once again, and especially thank you, Professor Riedel Renhardt, uh, for your time and for a very comprehensive uh, introductory presentation on, uh, on ICT introduction. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. And I will be now uh, closing this webinar so everybody will be automatically dismissed out.